Okay, number two of, second day of Av, which we call Menachem Av. I learned yesterday in the Sicha that, uh, according to the Chachamim, you know, the name of the month is Av. Over time, later, in the time of the Chachamim, the word Menachem became associated with it. And uh, to the extent that you could, that, in, that it's so, even in a, I think he was, yeah, I'm pretty sure he said even in a, Kesuba, you could write the month as Menachem alone. So just Menachem. So we're going to emphasize today the Menachem, the comfort, the uh, the respite and the emergence from that respite into redemption. This is Hayom Yom. Very short Hayomim today in regard to a, a boy, to Menachem Av, a directive for all. Hey, all. Any boy, all boys begin putting to fill in, uh, uh, begin putting on fill in two months before the boy's bar mitzvah, at first without a bracha, because uh, the fill in are not easy to get used to, especially when they're new. The, uh, the leather is pretty stiff. Takes time for the knots to uh, loosen up a little bit, and it's a complex set of wrappings that have to go on with it. So, until you get it straight, uh, you say it without a bracha, and then a few weeks later, the yomim goes on. You say it with a bracha, so that you're not stumbling around uh, and you've got everything set to say the bracha. That's how yom yom. Filling. You know that we have uh, in our tefillin we put on it says uh, the Shema Shema we declare the unity of God, and it says that you know and we'll t actually touch on this today that everything we do down here below is reflected enormously up above, and what does it say in God's tefillin? It says uh, a blessing about the Jewish people. He gives a blessing to the Jewish people. Tefillin from Rabbi Alma the tefillin of the of the Holy One is a tefillin which contains a blessing for us. Tanya, we're finishing now. We get us a shuva, the last parak, uh, chapter 12 on page 1118 in this book, 1118. And in this book, Nakuti Amorim, Chapter 12, the last parak in Geras Achuva on Kuf Aleph. So we have a principle. The principle is Ibdu es Hashem Basimcha. Ein Dover Oymen. Nothing stands in the way of Simcha. Simcha breaks through all boundaries. Yet, as we spoke yesterday, there's a value to the trace of negativity that's left over. Uh, as a result of the lower level of shuva, where we have perhaps done them some things that we that are not aligned with Hashem's will, or omitted to do something which is aligned with Hashem's will, and we didn't do it. And Dovid Amela, the Tzadik Ador, the Nasi Ador, the righteous of his generation, Mashiach Ador, the Mashiach, Mashiach of his generation, he says, Chatosi Kenegdi Somit, my sins are always in front of me. And the reason that this applies to him and applies to us is that it, it can serve to give us a bit of humility, <clears throat> knowing that we're not perfect, right? And as a result of that, there's always more that we can be achieving. And the, the path to achieving it is more and more humility. Humility, in this case, being more and more recognition of how little we are, and at the same time, how great we are because of our godly soul and humility here being meaning openness, openness to that. And so uh, the negativity stands as not per se to be, God forbid, get one dejected or sad, because you do as a shemba simpa, but it becomes a platform for spurring us on to even higher levels, greater levels, deeper levels of connectivity with Hashem. And therefore, Whatever negativity appears to be falling our way, and God knows most lives have some of that, difficulties, 
every negativity that seems to be falling our way, we, seem, we need to take with a different attitude. And the attitude is as follows, Eric Yud Beis. The reason a person needs to be joyous, even in receiving the difficulties, the punishments, the afflictions of the body, joy in the afflictions of the body, is lefi because the afflictions of the body that we have down here below are in reality goodness. Great goodness, he says. Great goodness, and strong goodness. To a soul which has committed some kind of negative thing, either omission or commission. For the purpose of what? And we've learned this before. Uh, we learned it at the very beginning of Agera Satshuva. The purpose of Yisurim, difficulties in this world, is to clean us up in this world and to save us from the scouring the Gehenim in, in, in the depths of the future world, the furnace. We used the mushal earlier, just like a knife, which becomes, uh, becomes uh, not kosher. A kosher knife becomes not kosher. The way to clean it is to put it through fire. Ubefrat, he says in parentheses, but there are saying, particularly, is this necessary? I'm putting in the words, is this necessary? But there are saying, in our generations, in generation Elu, in these generations, where we don't have the ability, in fact, we, we learned earlier, we're really forbidden to fast and to bring voluntary afflictions on ourselves because generally those will weaken us and they have the opposite effect. If we're physically weak, we can't serve Hashem at all, let alone serving Hashem B'Simcha. So in these generations, we don't have the ability to fast. If he misbir kol hatsoimes, according to the all number of fasts, which we discussed at length, the Zohar's number of fasts for certain particular sins, and the, and the discussion about does it need to be that number of fasts for each occurrence of the sin, et cetera, et cetera, which we discussed earlier. We don't have the capability for that. To do those fasts, which had been, had been prescribed with the shuva, uh, uh, for, for shuva according to the Rizal, those fasts which, which are necessary to cleanse the soul and to save it from the cleansing that goes on in Gehenna. Now, he's going to, in a minute, turn this around. You know, well, the point is, as he's about to make, a little bit of the of pain and suffering here. You can't compare the pain, the pain and suffering here to the pain of Gehenna. So it's a mercy. It's a kindness of Hashem. If we need to be cleaned off, have a little of the dross burnt off of our cells, of our garments, so to speak, to have it here rather than there. Because of a Ramban, as the Ramban writes, Zechariah Lebrucha, Mehagdoma, in his preface, the Parshas Eov, in his ex explanation of Parshas Eov, Job, Job, the one who was so afflicted, right? Shafila Yesurim Shel Eov, he writes, that even all the afflictions of Job, for 70 years, there's no comparison at all to the afflictions of one even one hour in Gehenim. Because the fire down here in this world is one sixtieth of the fire in Gehenim. Ella, however, since this world is built with kindness, and through very light afflictions, relatively, as heavy as they may be, light afflictions relative to the afflictions in Gehenna. So with these light afflictions, one is saved from heavy judgments 
in the world to come. And he gives a marshal. The movement, the, 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 the motion and the movement of a shadow, right? And the, when a shadow moves down here below, like a sundial, right? The sun moves and there's a little bit of movement on the sundial. So a little bit of movement down here below, but it's up for one tepach, which is a fist breath. That smallness down here below reflects a huge amount of movement up above in the ball, the sphere of the shemesh, in the heavens. So when a little bit of, of shadow moves down here below, that represents many, many miles of distance up above. So this is a mushal to say, what goes on down here is a small amount. And he's going to now turn the tables. Till now we've been talking about the seeming negativity. The seeming negativity we have down here below is nothing compared to the big fire in Gehenna. But it's also true the other way around, as we're about to see in terms of small amount of goodness down here below, the immense influence it has up above. As we're about to say, and how much more so, without any limit, when we have the an analogy, the analog here, this is another perspective. The worlds down here below are through the big chain of descent. It's a huge, huge amount of light up there, the orange self, right? Up there. There's really no up or down. In there. In godliness itself is godliness before the manifestation of the ten spheres, before the manifestation of worlds. Worlds, remember, is Lushan Helam, Oilam. These worlds down here are a concealment, a diminution of the big, big light up above. So say the whole of say the histalculus down here below represents a small thing that really is a manifestation of a much, much, much larger thing. So that's what he's saying now in the analog of Seder Histalculus of the worlds, Muraim Hamilus, from the great highest levels, Ad Olam Hazeh down to this world. Excuse me. and this is known, the Mashakosa Bazaya Hakoidish from what's written in the Zohar, the Indian of Alias Oilamus, the idea of the elevation of the worlds, the high elevation of the supernal worlds that takes place by the arousal from below, down here below, now talking about the Corbonus. We bring a little bird down here below and that creates a huge amount of influence up above. So this is the opposite, right? He said above is very big, and it gets small in, Ch in Seder Hestalshalus. We applied that first to Yisura. The Yisura and the afflictions down here below are really small compared to that same influence up above, which is really great. So a, Yis a Yisura down here below is sparing us from something much, much more severe up above. Now flipping that around, one bird, one little good deed down here below has an enormous effect up above. One bird, a yoina, a dove, a tour or a pigeon that we bring al gavaz mizbeach on the on the altar. I came its mincha, or one fistful of the mincha offering, has huge influence up above. So the little things we do down here below on the positive side have a huge impact, ramifications upstairs, so to speak. Bechein hu bechol hamitzvus. Mysis, and this is true of all the positive of the deeds that we do, the mitzvahs that we do. Kanaides is known from the Arizal. Bezesha Amarazal, and this is what our sages have said in the Gomorrah Yuma. They said on the Pasuk, on the Pasuk that begins, Hiskadishtam, you should make yourself holy, the Yisim Kedashim, and you will be holy. In other words, a little bit of holiness, sanctification down here below, creates a big holiness up above. He says, Odom, this is my, what the, the Gemara takes that Pusik and says, I think it's a, a Pusik in Vayikra, I'm not sure, because that's usually what most of them talking about the, uh, 
in the, about the, the, the uh, could be in Shmois. I'm not sure. Uh, you take a you take a little bit of offering down here below. So the Gemara says on that, when a person sanctifies oneself down here below a little bit, they sanctify that person very big from above. As is written above, meaning in the earlier parts of Tanya, we spoke about this quite a bit because, because it, we say so many bruchas that say, who makes us holy with his mitzvahs. What we're saying when we say that, that every mitzvah we do brings a effusion of kedusha, a fusion of holiness that's unmeasurable and unspeakable up above, and then that unmeasurable holiness rains back down here below. And that's the idea of sanctifying ourselves, that he sanctifies us through his mitzvahs. And you want for just to remind us that that level called Kaddish, sanctification, is a level that's coming from Soiviv Kal Alman, the all encompassing level, which encompasses all of the all of reality. The Chachamam is similarly as well, when it comes to reward and punishment. A little bit of good down here generates a lot of good up there, which flows down, and a little bit of the negative down here below, meaning the, the yasurim that, that one may have down here below, the afflictions that one may have given from God down here below are small compared to the, what the size that they are up there in the spiritual worlds. and as our sages have said, skar mitzvah mitzvah. The reward of a mitzvah is the mitzvah. In other words, the mitzvah we do down here, the reward is the effulgence of kadusha of holiness, which uh, emerges and which, which rises above and which spreads itself out and encompasses and is draws down that kadusha down here below. That's the reward of a mitzvah. Little things mean a lot on both sides of the coin, right? From the side of negativity and the side of positivity. Little things mean a lot. They have big ramifications. And it's up to us to choose which side of ramifications we're going to uh, manifest from above to below. Mitzvah, mitzvah, mitzvah. And the opposite is true as well. Meshachot as is written in another place. And he concludes, Ageras HaTshuva, Vedas L'Novin Nakal, and anyone who understands can, this should be pretty straightforward and now uh, you know, giving a little bit of flavor and the words of dash lenovin noko. The knowledge of someone who understands is easy, meaning this should be easy to understand. Umaskil al dover, and one who really gets it, what we've just said, and what we've been saying all along, the Alter Rebbe is saying all along, yim sotev, will find good. Because it really is up to us what kind of olam hazeh we have what kind of olam haba we'll have, and what will be our influence in terms of impeding, God forbid, or bringing gaula. And that's the end of this today's Tanya, and we get us our tshuva. Any comments? Uh, I have a question about Gehenna. I don't know much about Gehenna, but go ahead. Well, what I know about Gehenna is what the Christians say that your whatever will burn. I don't know what burns because the body's down here. What burns the, the soul? What what burns? No, what, no, the soul doesn't burn. The dross, the spiritual dross that attaches to the soul, is burned off. I don't know what they say. <laughs> I have no idea what they say, but I do know the little that I do know is about what we say, which is that the the blemish that you made. You know, there's a there's a, a, a medical procedure where you burn something to, uh, you know, to heal it. There's uh, definitely a medical procedure where you cut it out. But what you're cutting out is the negativity. You're peeling sure. away, cutting away the negativity so the soul can be restored to its healthy self. But is, is it a physical fire? Because again, no, no, what's, it's not physical, physical. what's no, getting there, burned? There is no physical fire. This is a spiritual fire. 
It's like the closest thing we have to this to we, that is, uh, well, maybe I, I shouldn't say that. There may be other marshalim, but, you know, the fire that uh, when we when we brought a Corbin in the base of Mikdash, there was a fire down here below, and there was a physicalization of the spiritual fire from above. And then that spirit, that physicalization of the spiritual fire went up and up and removed itself into that a fire into the spiritual realms whatsoever, you know, in all the spiritual realms. So it's a, it's a fiery spirit, a ruach esh, you know, something, imagine okay. that, a spiritual ruach, I'm I mean, gonna a, put, a fiery ruach, yeah. Personally, I'm going to put that away in the category of yet don't understand. But of course I, we don't understand, yeah. But the other thing is that you said in Olam Haba, um, things will be revealed, but Olam Haba is still called Olam. Right. In That's other, a in oh. other words, yeah. Yeah, but there are various degrees of Helam and Revelation. Atzilus is a Olam also, but I mean, we've learned this before. You say there's Dalshalus, there are degrees and degrees and degrees of contraction and contraction and contraction. All the all the worlds have some degree of contraction. But the higher worlds have less degrees of contraction and more revelation. So the higher you go up, more more is revealed. But they're all oilum, all oilums are from some de, the simsum is what starts the creation of worlds, remember. And simsum is a concealment, definitely concealment, but for the sake of a revelation. The revelation is appropriate to the kind of being that exists in those worlds. So in Olam Atzilus, the Netzolim, they call them, the emanated beings, they have, a, they, have, they have very little shell around them. But as you go further and further down, there's more and more shell in order that we can be more and more feel our, our existence down here below. Ultimately, it's, you know, this, is, this is the lowest of worlds. But every, every word, bottom line, every world is concealment, but appropriate for the uh, concealment and revelation for the appropriateness of that world. Does ba mean anything? Ba? Like more deep and more ba. spiritual? Yeah. The world to come. come is there a come. deeper, I know, but is there a deeper and like explanation to ba? Not that I know, I'm not that I know, not that I'm aware of. It's just a state that is not yet realized in us and will be, will come. That's all I know. Right. Adel. Uh, yeah, Adel. hi. Ed, good morning. Um, <laughs> I wanted to um when uh, one of the we are talking now, we're learning Igaris Hatshuva and Chazak. It looks like we finished it. Um the world to come, yeah. um, or like after a person leaves this world, mm -hmm. they do not have the gift of chuva. Right. Right. So you can't, so a person, whatever was most important to them, like they'll be stuck in that and uh, then they'll have the knowledge that it's wrong, but they won't have. The well, yeah, the yeah. But you could you flip it the other way. Not, not every, the, the, mo, the, port, the, the point of being down here below is, is not to get stuck up above, but to accomplish down here below. So Jolim Haba is, is in a positive vein. Right, so we have to grab but the well, opportunity. Yeah, but it's true. Wherever, wherever, whatever you do down here, that will be the spot for you up above. Uh, for Go instance, ahead. there's, uh, I don't know, there's a Gemara that I heard a speaker mention. I think it's Gemara Tainus about a, a certain individual who slept in the cemetery because his wife chased him out of the house on the <laughs> night before Rosh Hashanah. And he heard these two girls speaking. They were not alive. And mm -hmm. they were kind of telling him what the weather is gonna be for the coming year. And then he planned it accordingly and was very successful. But one of the things was that one girl says to the other, let's go to explore another, a different world. And the second girl says, I can't because I don't have a comb, a, a decorative comb for my hair. And this makes no sense because... Um, yes, it, yes, it does. 
<laughs> it's a it's a marshal. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't I don't have the beautification that's necessary. I didn't make that down here below. I didn't beautify myself down here below that I could be able to travel there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But even the the point that I was seeing in that was that like she can't get a comb anymore. Nope. So that's like, like one aspect of the Gehenna of the world to come is to know truth oh, and not be able oh, to oh, change. Oh, yeah, but hold, hold on, it doesn't. You, you're, you're, you're right. It says that every every tzaddik has a dwelling place of his own, and is jealous of the dwelling place of the other. But they're not stuck. You're only, the word "stuck" to me connotes, connotes too much negativity. You don't want you know, Gehenna is in our theology. Gehenna is not a place you're stuck in. Gehenna is a cleansing place to get up to where you can have pleasure, Hanoah, in the world to come. There's nobody stuck in Gehenna. I mean, there's maybe, I mean, there are there are some who are stuck in Gehenna, and the stories of people and Sadiqim going in and helping to get them to get out. There's a story a story of. Uh, of a, a non-Jew and a, and, a, and a Jew who are in Gehenna. And, and I'll make the story short. And so and I, I'm not a great storyteller anyway. But uh, so the, non, the non-Jew in Gehenna, he prays that his priest should come down and, and help him. Uh, it's actually even a story of, uh, that includes a rabbi, that one Jew has a rabbi and the, and the non-Jew has a priest and the priest helps him out and the rabbi helps him out. And then the, there's a Lubavitcher down there. And the Lubavitcher is playing for his Rebbe to take him out. And the, and the Rebbe says to him, this is your shlichus. Get it? But that's a, so nobody gets stuck in Gehenna. It's a cleansing place. In other theology, I think it's a place where you could rot in, you know, for, for the rest of eternity. But not in our perspective. <sighs> It's on the way. But once you're on the way, you get into a beautiful place, which is the place that your soul belongs in. And that's the, that's the dwelling place that you'll have in the future world. And it will be pleasurable. It may not be as high as, as your teachers or your rebbes, but And that's why they say that each one is jealous of the, the dwelling place of the, the tent of the one above them. But it's pleasurable. Olam Habo is pleasurable. Can I tell that story? Oh, yeah, please. If you know it, <laughs> please. Good. Yeah, it's about the breast liver. The breast liver, Rabbi Nachman says, if you come to my gravesite and say the um, Tikkun Akhlali, the 10 Pirkei Tehillim, I will pull you out of Gehenna by your payas. So there was a breast liver and a Chabadnik in Gehenna. And the breast liver is expecting Rabbi Nachman because he promised. And sure enough, Rabbi Nachman is seen from the distance approaching comes closer, it's a, Rabbi Nachman, he grabs hold of the uh, breast lover's pace and pulls him out. And uh, the Lubavitcher is like, where's my Rebbe? And uh, he calls out, Rebbe, Rebbe. And from the distance, he sees the image of the Rebbe approaching. He's like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, the Rebbe's coming. And the Rebbe is getting closer and he's stretching out his hand with a dollar and he says, bracha v'atzlacha, nishlechos again. But it's a story. <laughs> it's a good, interesting story. So none of us are going to get stuck because now we know that we don't what what that we could get stuck. But you know that story is an, is a good story. But the, we have to know that any of the yisurim that we have down here below, number one are already starting the purification process so that we're not going to have to be there at all. And if we have to be there at all, it's only a laundry. I have a shirt. I have two shirts in the cleaners. (laughs) One came out in the three days that he said it would. The other, I went back and he said, no, this is going to take much longer. I have to send it out for special processing. So some of our deeds and some of us will be out immediately or, or not need to go there at all. Some of us may be there longer, but it's just a cleaner. And once you're clean, 
you're up in Olam Haba, and with all the Hana and all the pleasure that comes in Olam Haba. But, but with all that in mind, keep in mind that this is not what we were created for, to have Hana in Olam Haba. We were created to bring Mashiach. We were created to do the avoided down here below, cleansing ourselves, not for the purpose, remember this, this Hana idea of, of Olam Haba is a rather self-serving perspective, isn't it? I'm serving God because I want the Hana in Olam Haba. That's not every, that's not, we've been learning, the whole of Chassidus is really the opposite of that. Now, the whole point of this is not achieving the reward of the mitzvah, although there is a reward of the mitzvah, or, or put it this way, that the reward of the mitzvah that we're about and that Chassidus is teaching us about, the reward of that mitzvah is Hashem Yisborah being revealed down here below with no impediments, with no historian, with no concealments, and in this oilam, which is a, in which the word is hidden, godliness will no longer be hidden, and and the revelation of Hashem will be down here below, and He will have what He's been creating, what He created us for in the first place, a dwelling place down here below. Now He's fine; He can live fine up there, but He wants it down here below, and that's why He created us. Um. So I just, I'm sorry, I maybe didn't say, express it so well, but the whole concept of yard site and of giving Kiddush that people should say brachos and of saying a Kaddish yeah, and yeah. the whole concept of this is that those up above, they can't do those things. The power to do the the gift of mitzvos, the gift of tshuva, is is just right now. Yeah. So yeah, sure. we say brachos, like when you give kiddush, you're giving kiddush because every bracha that is going to be said over the food that you served is going to be an elevation for that neshama. But that neshama can't say brachos, so you're right. Yeah. yeah. So this this is the world to grab it. This is the world to grab it, exactly, right. And even those aliyahs that we're, we're affecting in the neshamas up above, it's brought in another place. These are aliyahs in a, as we say, how do you put, how do you juxtapose the two that each soul has a dwelling place, sort of an encampment, and not it can't get to the encampment of the other, because it's brought in another place. That these are like pillars, that pillar separate pillars. And Elias can go up, 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 but within a pillar. And angels are like that also. Angels are called oimdim. Instead, in in Kassidus, there's a lot written about as, uh, angels called oimdim, those who stand, versus mehalchim, those who go. When you go, you go on a horizontal path, you got a lot of territory all outside of where you are. When you stand, the way this is understood is that you're standing in a, a particular pillar, a particular confine, and that's where your aliyah is. Having said that, the other, yes, so we're poil aliyahs, uh, these bruchas and these kedushas, and kedushin that we have, and are for, that we always say, so Zion and the Shoma Zol have an aliyah, that the Neshoma should have an aliyah. And in Lubavitch, I don't know if there's custom in other places, we often add, uh, we often add that in addition to the Shoma aliyah, that poil Yeshua's bekerah for orats, that the aliyah that the neshama has should affect salvations down here below. What goes up must come down. That's a huge principle, right? Our avoided down here below has an effect on above. Since down here, we just learned in this chapter, since this world is a small world compared to above, so the little bit we do down here below has a massive effect up above, and that massive effect is oil Yeshua's bakir of ordinance. It brings salvation back down here below. So when we are praying for the elevation of the neshama, which effect, which is affected by our the things we do down here below, the, the, the end of it is that that aliyah should have an effect. The ha'ora of the person should come down here and manifest its holiness down here below. So, I mean, it's a good point. I'm not sure this really meant to make, meant to make this point, that there is an aliyah, but the lay, aliyah is in a, in a restricted mode so that still what you do down here below is your place but this could be your pillar and this could be someone else's pillar 
and they could be at different levels. Anyway, all of that is interesting. Uh, and we really won't know much about it until it happens to each of us. But what we do know is that uh, we were created to serve down here below. And we are created to, so that because Hashem says, what does he say in Midrashtan? No, he says that I, I want the Holy One, blessed be he wants, he wants a dwelling place down here below. He, he's, he doesn't need a dwelling place above. He has one. He needs a dwelling place down here below. And that's what we need to concentrate on. Anything else? Yeah, I wanted to say something else about what yeah. you said earlier. First of all, the lines between Olam Haba being somewhere spiritual in heaven and this world, the days of Mashiach in this lifetime with this furniture is being blurred for me with all that I'm learning <clears throat> and the Rebbe is saying. But the other thing that I wanted to say is when you said that we're selfish because we want to enjoy Hashem's light, there's so many sources in the Torah that say that we are Hashem and Hashem wants to be with his Shekhinah, he misses his Shekhinah. So if the Tzadikim, Kuchabrihu, Israel, Araisa Chadhu, and Ori, Hu Orchem, but you know, there's a beautiful song that I was just listening to yesterday because of uh, the nine days. You could only hear like these Hasidish songs, and they, they have these beautiful psukim. I'll share them later, where it says that they quote that Hashem says to the Jewish people, My light is your light, Shanem, or something, and your light is my light, Shanem. Let's go together and light up Yerushalayim. Like our light is the same light. So yeah. if we see it, if we see it that way, that if we're enjoying Ziv Hashchina, then Hashem is enjoying Ziv Hashchina. That that it's the pleasure for Hashem. Yeah, there's no question. It's just the subtle difference is that the, all of that that you just said is because Hashem wants. It's about Him. It isn't about our. But it is about us because we are Hashem. We are manifestations of Hashem. First of all, first of all, we're not Hashem. Okay, we fine. Are God, we're... We, we are godly. We're not God. We're not Hashem, right? We're godly. He's Hashem and we are us. And we have an intimate relationship with each other, father and son, uh, you know, father, uh, wife, uh, husband and wife, et cetera. We, are, we have a relationship with Hashem. And the relationship with Hashem is for the, what all I'm saying and all that the Chazid is saying, the purpose of that relationship is not primarily for us to have the pleasure of the, of the world to come or the union with Hashem, but rather to bring Hashem Hashem into the world. But that first of all, it, it, we are Hashem, and that's the paradox. The we paradox are not Hashem, is we are not, we're we're, 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 we're we're not at, Hashem. <laughs> but our Atmos is Hashem's Atmos, and that's the paradox because, on the one hand, we are physical manifestations of God, according to what I learned from the, you know the Rebbe's teachings, that we are like we are here to experience Dira Batachtonim for Hashem. So when we're connected to the 613 strands of Torah and mitzvahs, then we're connecting Hashem and right. Hashem. And we're Hashem connected. has like the, the, the Hashem has the pleasure through us. We are yes. the physical so we're his hands and feet. Yeah, yes. yeah. So that means that our we share our atmos. mamish. We are literally a, a God, but of course we're not, of course oh, we boy. also have you to have to be really careful with that. We are not a God. Right. I know, I know, I know. It <laughs> so sounds much crazy. No, it doesn't but, sound crazy. I'll tell you, it doesn't sound crazy. So much of the Zora has been built on that, that we are God, or pantheism, that everything is God. You just have to be careful with, I'm, I think you understand it, I hope, correctly, but it's, it's to go around saying we are God is... I know, it sounds... You got to explain. Sounds, you got to explain. Right. So, yeah. so I am explaining. I am, it's a paradox yeah. between... Yeah, yeah. We, we, Hashem wants a relationship with an external being, but there is nothing besides Hashem. And That's so right. Hashem made so so okay. But so, see that that what does that lead to? Ain't Odin Elvado means even the blade of grass is God. Right. So but that's they have why you have to be that's why you have to be careful with it. You know, yeah. you're getting it, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to be careful with it. That's all. Because Ain't Odin Elvado is you know anyway, in, I think we shouldn't I think um yeah, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be serving Hashem al Manat Kabel Shar to to get right. a schar. Unless we should harvest. be serving Hashem almanas l'dirol b'tachtoinim. No, but it says almanas lo l'kabel schar dafka. 
that right. the word is specific. But then what for? If it's not to receive reward, what is it for? Why are we serving Hashem? Why? We, it's because the ultimate destination of this physical world is to be married to Hashem and to have intimacy with Hashem, to bring Hashem into our daily lives, like right now, into this year. So Hashem can enjoy out. learning Torah, you know, like with the oneg of Ziva Shechina. I don't know. I don't know. Something. We're, something. Well, I mean, we're, we're serving Hashem in order for His sake. We said, right, Lishma. What does it mean for His sake? To fulfill what He wants, which is the dwelling place in this world. And that is the revelation of Hashem, you know, all over. To restore, but even more so, the, revel the kind of revelation that existed at the time of the first temple, when godliness, when we could see God, and God could see us, and he saw us in, in an open way with no obstructions whatsoever. A, a world which is mamish, 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 godly, where God's presence is known to everything. And as the Rambam says, there is no other occupation of any human being except to, bring, to study godliness and to bring godliness into revelation. And the robots will do the harvesting. I don't know about that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I think we're saying the same thing, a little different language, but yeah, as I said, you just have to be careful that so much, so much uh, has been uh, negatively, um, I mean, I don't want to go on. There are other negatives that pervaded the world. The, the whole uh, heresy of Shabtai Sfi was built on this idea that we are we are Atzmas Elakus, even though we are Achelak Elakai. It's true, but, 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 but. Yeah, but also a lot of things that come down with the Klippa, once you take the Klippa off, you see the real fruit and the real MS inside of Correct. it. Correct. And, and this is including this one, including what you mentioned, that religion that everything is God. That's a klipa, yep. but inside that klipa, there's truth. Absolutely. As you said, it's a paradox. Yeah. All right. Very good. Anything else? Good conversation. So, uh, good Shabbos. And... Uh, Sunday we begin Egeres HaKodesh, the last part of Tanya, a very interesting set of letters that kind of vary between uh, the most esoteric parts of this Tanya, revealing deep, deep secrets in Kabbalah and applying them to life, and letters that he wrote to, that the Alter, these are letters of the Alter Rebbe, and the letters that he wrote to his flock, to his congregants, uh, admonishing them in a kindly way or encouraging them in a very nice way. Pastoral letters and deep secrets. And we'll start this in Mirza Shem on Sunday. Good Shabbos. What about tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow's right uh, Friday. I'm sorry. Ayon <laughs> Shikula <laughs> Shabbos. See, I'm living in the night. Ayon Shikula Shabbos. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll start it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, have a good day. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> hmm.